Did the U.S. really succeed in intercepting China's Dongfeng-26 missile? Was a technological breakthrough or a well-orchestrated peer show behind this supposed victory? In late March 2025, the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, the Navy, and military industrial giant Lockheed Martin jointly announced that their shipboard anti-missile system had successfully intercepted an intermediate-range ballistic missile simulating a hypersonic glide warhead at a Hawaiian range, a description of which is highly similar to the operational characteristics of China's Dongfeng-26. However, this claim quickly became controversial, from the technical logic to the operational possibilities. The layers of the U.S. victory were peeled back to reveal a complex picture of anxiety and bluster. Since World War II, the U.S. aircraft carrier battle group has been a symbol of global maritime hegemony, but this position is being shaken by the rise of Chinese anti-ship ballistic missiles. Dongfeng-26 is a carrier killer. The range covers 4,500 kilometers, can carry both nuclear and conventional warheads, and has a Terminal 18 Mach breakout speed and maneuvering capabilities. And its multi-warhead guidance technology makes the traditional anti-missile system virtually non-existent. The U.S. military internal projections show that if the actual combat encountered a saturation attack on the Dongfeng-26, the opportunity to intercept only two outside the atmosphere in the mid-range and the end of the high-speed dive phase and the success rate may be less than 20 percent. More ironically, in 2021 the U.S. Army had high-called standard six missiles for interception tests but failed miserably after firing two interceptors in unison, failing to hit even the simulated target. These realities reveal a harsh truth. The evolution of the spear has far outpaced the shield's ability to defend the success of the Hawaii test is in fact a well-designed show. The target bomb launched by the U.S. military itself and intercept the upgraded version of the standard 6 is still in the research and development stage, has not yet been verified by the actual combat. This left-handed attack, right-handed defense, closed-loop experiment is essentially an idealized single-target simulation, and the real battlefield in the Dongfeng the 26th of may be accompanied by electronic jamming decoy bombs and multiple warheads coordinated strikes are far away. The U.S. military even had to admit that its current laser weapons due to insufficient power, irradiation time is too long. In the face of hypersonic targets almost ineffective, more serious is that the U.S. anti-missile system has long been limited by capacity bottlenecks, the standard minus three missile annual production of only 12. In the face of the Dongfeng-26 cluster firing, the stockpile will be quickly depleted. Guam, as the core of the second island chain of the U.S. military, has become the focus of this offensive and defensive game. The U.S. military deployed here an TPY-6 radar and standard 3 Block 2A missiles, trying to build a 360-degree defense, but the range of the Dongfeng-26, directly into the scope of the strike, jokingly referred to as the Guam Express. Although the U.S. military high-profile publicity interception test, its defense system is still fatal loopholes, and TPY-6 radar can track the target, but cannot cope with multiple warheads subdirection, standard minus three missile interception altitude ceiling of 150 kilometers, and the Dongfeng minus 26 end of the swooping speed far more than the limit of its response. U.S. military projections show that once the interception fails, the carrier battle group will face a total wipeout of the end forcing the U.S. Navy, will be limited to the carrier's range of activities, from the coast of China 2,778 kilometers away from the safety zone. This strategic retreat is actually recognized the Dongfeng, 26 deterrent effectiveness, 26 deterrent effect. In the face of the overwhelming superiority of the Dongfeng 26, the U.S. military's strategic adjustment appears to be contradictory. On the one hand, it tries to avoid the risk by dispersing the base deployment, the development of nuclear submarine force, on the other hand, and into the path dependence, continued to invest tens of billions of dollars to upgrade the traditional anti-missile system. This struggle highlights the rigidity of the U.S. military thinking, as it once mocked China's 8J8 for an F-22, helpless, and now role reversal. The United States is trying to use the last century's anti-missile framework to deal with a new generation of hypersonic threats. China did not stop at the Dongfeng-26, 055 type destroyer carrying the Eagle Strike-21, boom, six and air launched ballistic missiles and other multi-strike means. Is the formation of a three-dimensional anti-intervention system to further compression of the U.S. military space? In the depths of this technology race, the chain of interests of the U.S. military-industrial complex is also worth analyzing. Lockheed Martin and other arms giants promote budgetary growth through the rendering of threats and the research and development budget for anti-missile systems in 2025, 
alone will amount to $24 billion, while actual technological breakthroughs are few and far between. For example, the research and development budget for the upgraded version of the Standard 6 exceeds $5 billion, but its interception effectiveness is still in the laboratory stage. This budget-driven innovation model resulting in the U.S. military into the technology catch-up trap, the more investment, but the farther away from the actual combat needs. At the same time, China through the civil military integration and focus on research in missile technology to realize the curve overtaking, its R&D cost is only a quarter of the United States, while the iteration speed is three times faster. In the next decade, this offensive and defensive game will enter a more subtle stage. The United States is trying to enhance the early warning capability through the space sensor network and artificial intelligence, but its over-the-top satellite, Aegis ship, data link there is still a five-second delay, cannot cope with the whole of the Dongfeng 26 orbit change. China has been in the Zhuhai air show to show the Red Flag 19 anti-missile system, its intercept altitude covers 30 to 200 kilometers, can be implemented on the hypersonic target multiple interception, and the official hint that the display is not the most advanced model. This technological generation gap or will force the United States to redefine the concept of defense from interception to the deterrent failure of the survivability of the construction, such as the development of electromagnetic railgun or low-cost drone swarm tactics. But no matter how to adjust, an indisputable fact has become clear. When the shadow of the Dongfeng 26 looms over the Western Pacific, the myth of the U.S. Navy's invincibility is disintegrating with every simulated interceptor that falls. From the tactical level, the Dongfeng 26's ability to detect and strike a chain is even more frightening to the U.S. In August 2020, the PLA launched a Dongfeng 26 missile from Qinghai, accurately hitting a target ship moving in the South China Sea, demonstrating the precision of its cross-regional strikes. This capability relies on real-time data chain support from China's space-based satellite network and over the horizon radar to form a closed-loop system from target discovery to destruction. In contrast, the E-2D early warning aircraft and satellite reconnaissance system that the U.S. carrier fleet relies on may be paralyzed by electromagnetic suppression or anti-satellite weapons during wartime, leading to a precipitous drop in battlefield situational awareness. On the economic dimension, the cost-effectiveness advantage of the Dongfeng 26 is further emphasized. A Dongfeng 26 costs about $10 million, while a U.S. aircraft carrier costs more than $13 billion to build and maintain. If a brigade of Chinese rocket forces equipped with 75 missiles, the total cost of only $750 million U.S. dollars, but can pose a deadly threat to two carriers. This asymmetric advantage breaks the traditional sea power game of capital logic, forcing the U.S. military had to reassess the sustainability of its carrier-centered strategy. Historical experience shows that the intergenerational leap in military technology often triggers the reconstruction of the strategic pattern. Just as aircraft carriers replaced battleships as the centerpiece of naval warfare in World War II, the emergence of the Dongfeng 26 marked the transition of ballistic missiles from a strategic deterrent to a tactical weapon. Its nuclear versus nuclear nature blurs the threshold for escalation. A conventional strike could be misjudged as a nuclear attack, and this uncertainty in itself constitutes a powerful strategic deterrent. U.S. think tanks have simulated that if China launches 30 Dongfeng 26s at the beginning of the conflict, even if 50% are intercepted, it can still paralyze 80% of the operational capability of the Guam base and deprive the U.S. military of air control in the Western Pacific. In this silent contest, China's strategic certainty contrasts sharply with technological innovation. Through the continuous optimization of the Kiangsuzin ballistic and wave-riding body configuration, the ray entry maneuver range of the Dongfeng 26 has been extended to 1,000 km horizontally and 60 km vertically, which is far more than the SAD systems interception envelope. The U.S. military high hopes of the glide phase interception concept due to the inability to solve the high-temperature black barrier area communication problems so far stayed in the paper stage. When the technical advantage into strategic initiative, the balance of power in the Western Pacific is irreversibly tilted, this may be the United States' frequent speculation interception success of the real anxiety.